Thank you. Thank you and uh, welcome. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I apologize for those of you needing to stand, but it's always a good, good thing when you have a room packed with people that want to be here. Um, I want to call this order, uh, this meeting to order, this order to meeting. I want to call this meeting to order, and I want to call on Mr. Bilbro to lead us in the pledge. Everybody stand as able, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Now we want to go to Mr. Oliver, who will give us our mission statement. Burford County Schools will, will provide quality educational programs and services to ensure student academic and vocational success. Thank you, Butch. Um, going on to public comment, and we have none, so we're going to keep going. We know it's got a packed agenda, and we know a lot of you have places to be. So um, the next item is going to be number two, our agenda. I Ask for a motion for the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Next, we got number 3.1, approval of the minutes. There's several. Does anybody here need to recuse themselves from any of those meetings? Terry, Draper. March 5th, I was not present, so. I was right. absent. I was, I was not present March 5th. I need to be. <laughs> you didn't have a board, did you? I, I, we I'm just absent. didn't have five. <laughs> I'm I, I need to accuse myself for March 5th. Okay. okay. I promise everybody we did have a quorum, so we did have five here that night. Um, all right. Can I entertain a motion? So yes. Second. All right. We have a motion to approve the minutes for February 19th and March the 5th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Now we're on to 4.1, the edu Character Education Award, and I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Nicole Howard Spencer. Ms. E. And Ms. Teed is going to be our board representative up there. Good evening. The character trait that was recognized in our schools for the month of March was honesty. At the elementary level, the nominees were from Bath Elementary, Landry Berry, from Chocolate Middle School. Emily Mauser from Chapel Winnesy Primary, Tegan Weatherington from Eastern Elementary, Eliza Lee from John Cotton Taylor, Romello, Boston from John Small, Camilla Saavedra from Northeast Elementary, Braley Riggs and from S.W. Snowden, Jemiah Meadows and the winner at the elementary level was Tegan Weatherington from Chapel Winnesy Primary. They will come forward. Right up there, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Stay right near there. He gets an award for this. Tegan is a kindergartner at Chakawanji Primary School. His parents are Jeff, Jeremy and Jennifer Weatherington, if they will stand. And he was presented by his teacher, Miss Penny Miller, if she will stand. And Miss Miller wrote, Tegan is such a sincere little boy. He is very adamant on always telling the truth and encourages his peers to do the same. Tegan is a great example to his fellow students. An example of this is when we read the Cat in the Hat book. I asked the question, who would tell their mom about all that had happened while she was out? Tegan spoke up and told all of the class that he would tell his mom because that was the right thing to do. Tegan has strong morals and values, and they radiate with the way that he treats others, and he is not afraid to speak up for what is right and good. We say congratulations to Tegan. Dress award, you, you win get that it. Really, I tell you right now. You, you tell Avery to be quiet in class. <laughs> Congratulations. Good job. At the middle school level, the nominees were from Bath Elementary, Franklin Trace Cherry, from Chocolate Middle, Elijah Baldwin, from Northeast Elementary, Gavin Taylor, from P.S. Jones, Reagan Gurner and from S.W. Snowden, Corey Jones, and the winner at the middle school level was Franklin Trace Cherry from Bath Elementary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Trace is an eighth grader at Bath Elementary School. His parents are Eddie and Crystal Cherry. They will stand. Okay. And he was presented by all of the eighth grade teachers. If any of them are here, they will stand. And they wrote, Trace is a straightforward kind of student. He is going to tell you the truth, even if it is not to his own, his, his, his own advantage. For instance, when Trace is unsure of a particular concept, he will tell you when he is not understanding. He will also tell you when he understands a topic and is excited about it. In addition, Trace is honest when it comes to his homework. Trace typically com completes his homework assignments, but if he forgets to do something, he will come right out and tell you he forgot to do it. We appreciate Trace's honesty and encourage him to continue to be his own advocate when it comes to his learning. So congratulations. <laughs> This is a good trait. Keep it up. At the high school level, the nominees from the Early College High School, Rita Schneider. From Northside High School, Trenton Murphy. From Washington High School, Malachi Cobb. And from Southside High School, Sarah Petty. And the winner at the high school level was Rita Schneider from Early College High School. She would come forward. <laughs> Rita is the ninth grader at the Early College High School. Her parents are Staten and Carolyn Hardison, if they will stand. And she was presented by our teacher, Mr. Jeff Probert, if he will stand as well. And Mr. Probert wrote, on January 22nd, 2019, Rita Schneider found a personal check on the floor in the BCCC Media Center right. and turned it in to Dr. Probert. Yeah. The check had been dropped by another student at the Early College High School. The check was returned to the student. Rita's actions not only exemplify personal integrity, but saved the other student's mother from possible fraud and theft. The check could have been found by someone without personal integrity, giving them access to, bank, to the bank account number, routing number, and other personal information. We say thank you and congratulations to Rita. All our winners will come up, come forward, and we'll get a group picture. parents because you play a hand in in the uh, personalities and in all the characteristics that these young men and women form in school and I thank you for not only being here tonight to support them but to support them on a daily basis this is a wonderful thing that that we have here at Pope County Schools um, now we're going to move on to 4.2 this is something that is near and dear to my heart because I was also a Washington High School cheerleader long ago when we wore longer skirts but um, but anyway it was 97 it wasn't even it was 76 but anyway anyway I was three um, I am so <laughs> I'm more bored <laughs> I'm not okay. even going there. Anyway, now that they have let everybody know how old I really am, I am so proud of you, not just as an alumni <coughs> of Washington High School and an alumni cheerleader, but I'm just proud of you as a school board chairman and school board member uh, that you went and represented us so well. And I'm going to turn this, and it doesn't hurt that I know the coaches so well. They're all near and dear to my heart, <coughs> sister. And I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Cheeseman. Uh, good evening. So on March 17th, or maybe a day before that, I actually received a, a tweet that came right at me towards my account that said, meet your 2019 national champions. And so with that, I've asked those 2019 national champions to come be a part of this meeting. 
Um, but first, I just want to really kind of play it out for a moment. So I'm a former athletic director uh, from the state of California and while also teaching there. But the interesting part is people often ask, ask me as an athletic director, where does cheerleading rank when it comes to sports and athletics? And I'll be quite honest with you, I think it ranks right up top with everything else. Because what you do, sincerely, is just incredible athleticism. And I'm not sure the room understands what you specifically have to do to be successful, not break your neck while you're doing it, <laughs> but even more so, just the amount of time, the energy, the strength conditioning, the mindset to be able to balance such that type of work along with your schoolwork, playing softball, playing other sports, still being that great child that you are, still living a great high school life, and still being a part of the families that you're a part of. So with that, I thought it was really important from my position to invite you here tonight to really help this entire community in Beaufort County understand what your experience was in Myrtle Beach. So I'm going to ask your coach, Ms. Cutler, if you can please come up and introduce everyone. And as she introduces you, if you can step forward here and face the crowd, uh, that would be great. But on behalf of the board, we congratulate you for this success. Ms. Cutler? I'd first like to introduce my assistants, Lauren Hodges, who uh, teaches at Eastern, but is a former Washington High School cheerleader. And actually, Washington <laughs> High School has two national championships in their history in cheer. And she was on the first team that won one. Uh, she's our JV coach. And Myla Marsh is an assistant to the program. Like uh, Mr. Cheeseman said, they've worked really hard. They put in so many hours, and since February, the um, we've had half of our team, you know, leaving school, where most of them take very challenging classes there and at Beaufort. They've gone to soccer practice, softball practice, track practice until five or five thirty, then they leave that practice and they come to us to practice from six to eight. So that's a long day, and then they go home and do homework. But they decided in December when we went to the state championship and we came in second by 0.5. Um, but we had one of the top 10 scores of the day of all the teams there and we received a bid to this national championship, an invitation to go. So that's how they got there. This was a two day tournament in Myrtle Beach and uh, the first day they led their division by 3.2 points and they came gunning after them the next day, but we held on. We held on and we put all of that hard work uh, into, into practice and, and they did it. And I'm so proud of them. And I'm glad and hope that uh, you're all proud of them and they're proud of themselves. So I'm just gonna, in no particular order, just down the row here. Uh, Rebecca Zerniak. Grace Poss. Athena Katsuris, Grace Berry, Anna Taylor, Taylor Moore, Mary Michael Bilbro, Katie Council, Trista Williams, Bailey Schmidt, Ashley Cutler, Nakaya Ebron, Ashanti Booth, Ariana Jenkins, Sabrina Corpru, Kamaya Keys, Reagan Allegood. We have one girl, Ashlyn Willard, who couldn't be here because she's at ECU meeting with an advisor about the dental program and pursuing the next chapter of her life. So that, would, that was important. Anyway, you see they got these lovely lime green jackets and medals and a banner and trophy that they've left sitting back there. But nonetheless, they worked hard and we're proud of them. And thank you for recognizing us tonight. Right. <laughs> 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 
And once again, I'm going to speak from behind uh, these lovely young ladies that uh, not only is it hard work on their part and hard work on the part of the coaches and the teachers, but it's a lot of hard work and driving back and forth and picking up and dropping off on the part of the parents. So we want to thank them, too, for that support. And for all the parents like Mr. Bilbro who had to go to Myrtle Beach to watch. But uh, anyway, awesome. I want to... Yeah, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. And as a former cheerleader, I also know that cheerleading, unlike all the other sports, is not one season but all year long, right? All right there you go. There and go. I wore her jacket today. That's why she didn't have it. I spilled mustard on it. <laughs> so it's my fault. And I couldn't tell where the mustard stain was. So. Right. But uh, thank you so much to our coaches and to our girls. Much luck to you in the future, and we look forward to seeing you. Did we get a, did you get a picture? Did you want a picture? I'd love that. Yeah, let's get a picture. Yeah, we might have to scrunch in girls and do maybe not a pyramid, but do kind of a. Yeah, don't tell the pyramid. Yeah. It'll be flipping back on us. Is there You see them coming? <laughs> well, I have one that's I know you do. No, actually, my, my little one is tall. Really? But I just thought there was a job. Wow. This is my fifth year on the board. And, uh, she was I guess that's what I was thinking about when you first joined. There's 15, girls, 15 little girls with a bow in her. Wow. Yeah. And Lisa can't sleep. Thank you so much. Now, at this time, as much as I know that everyone would love to stay and, and hear the rest of this meeting, uh, this is usually a good time that we take a break. So if you came for a character ad or to uh, congratulate these young ladies, uh, you are welcome. We'll take a couple minutes break. You are welcome to head on to your next venture, be it dinner or homework or <laughs> basketball <laughs> practice. <laughs> Goodbye. <coughs> Okay. Ashton Cutler, was there a way we could get their their performance video put on the website? They, they have yeah. some clips, I don't know. If they have it, we can yeah, she, she said they had it. Yeah, no, I can do it. They really did. Saturday they did. I know Perfect. A little, little blemish on Sunday, but also very, very good. I don't I, that was that fever. I don't think those people All right, decided. anybody uh, that's <laughs> anyone that's standing, you're welcome to have a seat now. Oh, there's plenty of seats. Uh, we're going to move on uh, to 5.1, which is SW Snowden Elementary School, Ron Clark Academy. See you, Marty. Miss Winley is not here. Somebody else just knows she is. Where is Miss Winley? She's here. Okay, Miss Winley. Hi. Miss Winley, come on up here. It might be a start first, if you don't mind. So on March 15th, we had a professional in-service day, and Ms. Winley approached me uh, when I first arrived, and she said, you know something our educators need to reach to the next level, and we have this opportunity. And so she had an opportunity with the Ron Clark Academy, and we met as a school improvement team when I came down to her school, and they had this awesome idea, and I said, look, through your leadership, if you can go ahead and write a proposal, then we can figure out how we can get you there. And so with that, she wrote a very detailed proposal citing specifically what their goals were and even more so what the cost would be and shortly thereafter we were able to accommodate that with the money so with that I've asked her to come here um, to tell you about March 15th and what the experience was and little does she know at the time and she probably knows now but I followed up on that experience on March 21st so I too oh. saw Ron Clark last Thursday so awesome. good luck to you. Awesome. All right. <coughs> well um, I just want to, good evening to everyone first, and I just want to tell you a little bit about our uh, trip to Ron Clark Academy, and um, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. It was amazing. <laughs> it was awesome. It was stunning. It was shocking, and not in a bad way. I mean, um, can you imagine, I say it's like Disney World. When you go to Disneyland or Disney World and you walk in and you hear all the music playing and everybody seems to be having fun and enjoying themselves, well, that's how it was there. I mean, when you get to the door, 
You hear the music. The kids are on both sides of the door. They are smiling, they are clapping, they are cheering, they are saying welcome to RCA. They are saying thank you for coming. And as you enter the door, the first thing you see is this giant slide in the commons area. Okay. Tell you a little bit more about the slide um, later. And then as they guide you around the hallway, I mean the art, art the art, the aesthetics, everything is beautiful. They are like, the walls are painted with giant size photographs of the students and staff, you know. Um, and then you see a giant dragon. You get in the gym. No, it was the, um, what was it, Tyrannosaurus or something like that first? Yeah, and then you get in the gym and there's this another giant dragon. I mean, it's like uh, breathtaking, you know. So you're trying to take all of that in, and then of course Ron Clark and um, his co-founder Kim Bearden get up and they both speak, and they are very excited and get you energized and mm -hmm. talk about what it is you're going to see. Next, following that, we start the classroom tours. And here's where you start seeing those little bits and pieces that you know you want to put into your school. You start seeing um, the teachers have excitement when they're teaching. Um, all the classrooms have platforms. So the teachers are able to walk higher, they're elevated higher than the kids along the platforms and they track the students the students are able to track them. They keep them engaged. Um, then you next you see the lessons. The lessons are very rigorous. They're like two levels above as a math instructor. And I've taught math 19 years. Sorry, Middle school. I can't search the web on it. <laughs> 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 Love devices, don't you? <laughs> okay, but I will say that as a math instructor teaching high school and middle school in the classroom of fifth graders, he put a math problem on the, what was it, Promethean board. Very few of my ninth graders would have been able to do that problem. And those kids handled it. They were able to handle that type of um, rigorous, challenging work. Yeah. Um, I did not get a chance to ask him, but the first time that I went, you know, when I was at Southside and attended Ron Clark Academy, um, I did ask, and he said that one of the things they like to do is they like to identify who's the top child in the classroom. So they teach two levels above that. And of course they have after school tutoring, to ensure that they bring all the other kids up to that level. So that was something that was very intriguing to me. And as we continued going from classroom to classroom, we continued seeing that same structure. You know, um, the school is founded based upon three, climate, climate, there's the rigor, and then student engagement. And then that's balanced out with the structure, the discipline that is there. Those children are very disciplined. When they talk to you, they're going to give you the eye contact. I mean, they know how to keep a conversation going. Yeah. Um, so they are very much engaging themselves. And they are so enthused and excited about learning. It makes you excited. It makes you feel like, okay, I can go back. I can get the same thing out of the kids that I have to touch, that I have to put my hands on. Um, at the end of the day, you have the opportunity to get what we call slide certified. And that's where that big slide comes in. And Ron Clark's theory is that take away the, you can't do this, I know this won't work, but change that with why not? And let's just try it and have that courage. So 
I think everyone that went with me got slide certified. Mm -hmm. I did not get slide certified. <laughs> well, he asked, you know, if you have some medical condition or whatever, you, you may not want to go down the slide. But I would have loved to have been down there. Um, our main focus for going was to preview and get an idea of the house system that he uses. Um, and as you can see, we're all dressed in um, to represent one of the four houses. Um, that house system is based upon the students earning points for the academics for character ed. Um, it also is like a small family within the small family. It gives the kids another adult that they can relate to and assist them with their education. And as I said, our plan is to put in this house system. There's going to be four houses. We have the Altru Ismo, which are the givers, represent the give, givers. Amistad, which <coughs> is friendship. Isabendi, courage. Revere, which are the dreamers. Um, all of our staff and our students will be randomly selected to be in a particular house. Um, each house will be like a team. We'll have a staff member as a house leader. Um, as I said, the houses will earn points for positive behavior and academics. We'll keep up with those points uh, by using a cl class dojo, which is a system that we already have in place that we use to um, reward our kids. Um, so this is going to tie in with our PBIS system. And we are looking forward to getting started on it. Um, <coughs> But I also, as I said, brought my staff here. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take up a whole lot of time. Just, she said, I'm here five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case um, you guys had any questions and wanted to get the perspective from the teacher side. You know, the administrator, I'm going to look for, okay, the discipline, the rigor, you know, how do I make this challenging for my kids and everything. But from a teacher's perspective, they are here. If you have any questions for them. If not, yeah. if not love to it. hear what the teacher come up and talk. Well, uh, Whoever the first one wants to volunteer. So speak about yes, uh huh. Yeah. Awesome. They told me I couldn't talk. Oh. <laughs> I talked too long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shanae Moore. I teach fifth grade at Snowden. I'm nervous. I don't know why. But I always wanted to go to Ron Clark. I heard so much um, about them, especially from two of my coworkers who was in um, Ron Clark's class growing up. I grew up in Brooklyn. So just learning about how they interacted with him in class and being able to go to Ron Clark and see all the different things that they had going on, especially seeing how kids interact with each other and cheer each other on when they do good things or they critique each other and tell them, you know, next time you can do this or you can change the way you do this and they don't get upset. It's more so much, it reminds me kind of of us where we're a family atmosphere at Snowden. And that's how they are. They encourage each other and even though their houses are kind of competing against each other, but they support each house whether they're in it or not. And just to see how they learn and how engaged they are and how interested they are. I enjoy most of the math class because I love math. And just seeing the problems that these students are able to do and to see how rigorous it is, like Ms. Willie said, and how their thinking ability to those levels um, allows them to be able to get problems that high school kids and stuff are doing done is just amazing because when we think about our kids and stuff like that, it allows us to be able to say, what can we pick or take from here to use in our classroom? We know we don't have the funds to do everything that they can do, but even if we can take one or two things away that they do and incorporate it into our classroom, and it makes Snowden so much better than the greatness that we already have there. So that's what I love about it. I have a question, uh, Shanann. I don't know if you can answer this. Maybe Miss Winley can, or, or may, I don't know that we any of us actually know the answer. Obviously, this is not an overnight mindset that these kids have. So, what does Mr. Clark do to get these kids to this point? Do, does that make sense? That question. Yeah. There's a mindset that they come in with that he has to convert to his way of how what the academy stands for 
Do, do you ever get to see, like, the new recruits that come in, how they get them to the mindset? He needs them to be open-minded and ready for the challenge. And I remember um, when we was at Ron Clark, he was saying that when they first get their letters saying that they're accepted as a Ron Clark, they were so excited. Then he would tell us about after their first day of school that they would go home crying because I think so, yeah. of they didn't imagine what they would have to go through would be anything like what they have seen or heard. So just getting in their minds that they can do it and working together as a group. Like I know he said that on Sundays, every Sunday at 6 o'clock, they have their teachers and volunteers and stuff come in and go over math facts and stuff with them. Like these kids were doing square roots so you know, 125, stuff like that in fifth grade. So they have their school open even on Sundays, whereas they going over math facts and stuff with students and preparing them so that when they do get in the classroom, this is stuff that they already know and they can just go through their lesson and stuff with. And what I enjoy too is that even when it comes to like ELA, when we went to one of the classrooms and one of the workshops, they made the statement that ELA teachers said that it's not just her that's teaching ELA. It's whatever class that they go into. It's continuing off of, you know, what they learn in ELA as far as the synthesis and making sure that they have a plan before they even check anything. So it's every single one of them are on one accord of what they do as far as rules, procedures, expectations is concerned. Because so I, I watch a lot of the videos and the kids are just spectacular. If you haven't ever watched a video, you should. They're spectacular and I just wonder how he cultivates them from the first day to well, the structure and the discipline and everything that he has that's also part of he's already established that relationship it's understood when they come in that he'll have right. a certain and the parents expectation have that in him and that have established that relationship so even if like she said the first couple of days there's a lot of crying going on you know they still come back so that they can you know Learn first, parents first, are yeah. mandated to volunteer. That's correct. Like they don't have janitors or anything like that to clean the school. Those parents have to come in and volunteer their time. So if they want their child to go to Ron Clark, they have to mandate a certain amount of hours for their kids. To it's 48 so, hours per wow. school year. Wow. Every parent has to donate 48 hours to school. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you could do that, Miss Winley? So a couple of things, if you don't mind me jumping in, but you asked the question of how do you get all the children on board? Well, first of all, Ron Clark Academy is now seven years old, I believe, and what you see is not what you saw on the first day or even in the first year, so it's a culmination of everything. Um, and a lot of it is through donation, um, you know, but Mr. Clark specifically talks about just creating that culture, but part of how they get people on board is these are students who come from areas of poverty, students who have um, very some of them have very strong behavioral issues these are not the top of the top i mean he's working with all levels of student but after they're accepted into the program they immediately do a site visit to the homes and so that's where you have that one-on-one -on -one conversation of this is what the expectation is going to be but not just of the child yes of the family too so part of it is really just maintaining those relationships is what he's really spectacular at well, I'm so glad that you all got to go. I'm excited to see what what you will do at Snowden to inject some of that into your curriculum and your day-to-day -day activity. What are you going to do first? Chase, take my classroom. Before we sit down, we're not sitting down until we get our chance. Good job, Snowden. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we're going to move on to 5.2, the Golden Leaf STEM grant, uh, Mr. Cheeseman and Ms. Uh, CTE Director, Ms. Wendy Petaway. Excellent. So I'll stand next to you for a moment. If you'll let us know which one you want us to click on first. Yeah, she click So I wanted to stand next to Ms. Petaway first uh, before we turn this over to her. So first and foremost, uh, last semester prior to my arrival, uh, Ms. Petaway and a few of her peers specifically approached the board asking for the opportunity to apply for a STEM grant, which the board did approve for the application. And so through her writings and through her workings, along with um, you know, Ms. Andrea Lilly and Ms. Ashley Pageant and a few others who were proofreaders for that matter, we won. And we're very excited about that. 
But in terms of the next steps, this evening we're here to provide information to you so you can consider, you know, what would this grant truly look like here in Beaufort County Schools, and even more so, whether you would like to accept the grant. And so on April 2nd, we're going to ask you to come back and actually vote on whether you'd like to accept this Golden Leaf grant. But in short, I've asked Ms. Petaway to come because, she, number one, she has spent an incredible amount of thought in this process. And number two, we just wanted to make sure that everyone's on the same page of what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it will feel like, but ultimately, are there other costs that may be associated into it when we look at the Ed Tech Center? So with that, with great appreciation and this and great value, we turn the table to you. Um, as Mr. Cheeseman said, this is more of a fact finding um, at this point, and I appreciate all the assistance that uh, I've been given by um, finance and and others um, and the maintenance folks, as well as Mr. Cheeseman and the board. Thank you so much. Um, this is just a brief history. Uh, on February seventh, the Golden Week Board did vote to give us a little over $1.2 million for the renovation. That's the cost, um, most of the cost for this grant. And then included in that are some transportation costs and equipment costs. This is an updated drawing, and I know you can't read this, but um, we do have some larger copies. If you'd like to see one, they are available. Of where we would like to place different things within the academy and within the renovation. What we've talked about is the um, possible expansion of upper level CTE courses, as well as some other courses, but mainly some things that are upper level CTE courses and offering some of the courses that we can't currently offer across our district, such as perhaps electrical trades. Only our north side students get to take advantage of that currently. And then um, possibly putting uh, some help for virtual academy students that we've delved into a little bit. We've done some frequently asked questions. I know there's been a lot of not much information on the details because we didn't really have anything to talk about details yet. But basically, and I'm not going to read these for you, but basically why we need this academy is mainly for our business community. They employ 25% of our current workforce, and that industry sector is the highest paid sector um, within our county currently. The timeline would not be immediate. It would begin in 2020 um, to give time to work out details and schedule alignment, which classes would be offered and things such as this. Would the students have to switch schools? We know, and as a product of Beaufort County, I know that we are very strong advocates of our geographical areas. Um, but they would not have to change schools. It would be that they would maintain their home school and maintain all the rights and responsibilities of those schools. <coughs> How would that work? Basically, the first two years of their high school, they would remain at their home school, take foundational courses, CTE courses that would be offered. And then during their junior and senior years, they would have the opportunity to go to the academy to take upper level courses that may not be available at their schools. The board has been very generous about academies and there was an uh, EWIF or Governor's Innovation Grant that was put into place several years ago that um, put academies within high schools and you may um, know about the Safety Academy at Southside or the Automotive Academy at um, Northside High School. We and you were very generous um, board about providing transportation if students wanted to transfer to those particular schools and also um, provided for the opportunity for students to be able to travel to those schools if they wish to take courses during their junior and senior years. Um, right now, we haven't had a lot of students to transfer. We've had a few. Um, if someone were to travel from, say, the, the Snowden area over to Northside, they could be on a bus four to five hours to get to Northside if they wanted to travel to the automotive and vice versa for the um, Safety Academy. 
the teachers, where would they come from and who would they be? We would not hire additional teachers. It would be basically for no more than one semester and a half a day of that semester, and that could include their um, planning period, that they would have the opportunity to teach upper level classes at the academy. And it would also serve as a recruiting tool um, for students within their home schools so that they could grow their programs as they seek to do now. The additional costs, um, what we can look at, we've, um, and Mr. Wynn and I sat down and looked at uh, basically $2.19 per mile and we looked at the miles to <coughs> from each school, um, would be about $30,000 per year for that midday run. You already provide the morning run and the afternoon run. Um, to the ed tech and to the early college. And then also we looked at increased utility and custodial costs and there were a, a little over $26,000 is what we can estimate with the additional space at the academy is what we're looking at. And those were done from costs that were provided by um, some of our energy folks and um, our energy providers. The, how would those be absorbed? Well, one way, possibly, and I know, I know we were trying to speak in facts, but we, none of us know the future. So what we're looking at is possible virtual academy students. We were able to enroll an additional five students last year, and our ADM is a little over $5,700. If they each enroll in at least two classes, you would get to pick up the ADM for those students. And we did pick up a little over $28,000 in 1718 um, from our virtual academy. And then we talk about businesses. We had 12 businesses to sign on to our proposal and agree to assist with costs. Um, we can get specific with them depending on what you say about this academy and if we move forward. But several have expressed interest in providing transportation equipment costs and other costs we would need to just ask and that's pretty much it um, I know this is a kind of quick presentation but if you have any other information you would like for us to try to find out be happy to do that I may or may not be able to answer specific questions right now but um, we're open to trying to find out any information you might need to know when they have you uh visit an academy yes ma'am um, did you tour it yes ma'am and what was your um our dual states for the <coughs> cats academy we did tour um they used an old industry building actually um they are a much larger operation than what we would be but i thought the opportunities provided to their students were quite spectacular and some of the things I know if you were to walk into their automotives lab um, there is NASCAR money there so they have outfitted that it looks like a warehouse beautifully and I understand that we wouldn't be able to get to that level but it was a good concept and they have <coughs> offered actually their board chair actually has a house in Bath and he has offered to assist us in any way they can how long have they been established that academy has been in place um, three or four years, I believe. <coughs> anything else we can gather for y'all? Or if you have questions after, we'll be happy to gather any further information that you might need that I can reasonably I, get. Go ahead. Can I, speak? Go ahead. Oh, I got lots of questions, but what I'd rather say is this. I don't think this is something that we can just take up 10 to 15 minutes inside a regular board meeting. Uh, before we sign up on something like this, we need a dedicated meeting to come back. The questions that I have would be, where are you gonna get the other money? You're not gonna build this for 1,235,000. What are the commissioners saying about it? The commissioners went on record several years ago that they were not gonna supply us with any capital moving forward on that EdTech facility. Have they changed their mind? I've talked to a few and I haven't heard that they've changed their mind. So, because once you build this, you're going to have an ongoing cost of upkeeping. And 
are they on board with this? I know when I say that now, hold on, let me back up. I know they said, I've heard some of them that they said in meetings that they were in support of this, sure, move forward. But just saying, okay, go do it, doesn't write the checks. Yeah. So how are we going to do that? There's a lot of money involved here. Not saying it's a good or bad thing, but there's a lot of money that we don't have within this grant. And we need to know who's on board as far as the county commissioners with a checkbook, not just good wishes. I understand. But I, I just don't think this is anything that we can even take up inside a regular meeting. Well, we had the same term. discussion even before they put in to, exactly. to write the grant. And I agree with you. I don't. I don't same think concerns. ten or fifteen minutes in here. I think we need to reconvene and and ask some very tough questions. But along with that, if I can say to make sure I see stands here, what I would need for you to step in and help us understand. And I was going to ask you this when you get to your part of the meeting tonight. I know you got some capital coming up. When I because I've got all the, the original paperwork. When I look through it as to what they were going to do, you've got about 1.1 million for renovation. There's a hundred thousand dollars in there for equipment, which there's no way we'd be able to staff the kind of I mean equip the kind of things right. that are being asked here for a hundred thousand right. dollars. Just the automotive shop alone would exceed that. So we got to find out where the money's coming from and what is the true cost before we move forward on this because these will end up will end up being fixed costs this isn't a one-time thing the grant shows up everybody's happy moving forward this is cost that's going to come every year every year over and over and over to run this facility but Stan what I was going to say is I know in the original uh, in this proposal that we're going to put in like a couple of five ton this is just a one simple thing as an example a couple of five ton units but what was the replacement cost is it included for the original boiler system because when I look back at I see the renovations here you know where I'm at so you already granted the original system here puts in some new systems up front in the classroom area but that facility is heated by a boiler system from 1977 that you have on our current capital list for this year which is another you've estimated $140,000 I don't believe that money is included in this. It's not, is it? Mm -hmm. So see, those are the kind of things right there I'm talking about. You're, we got 1.2 million in a grant, uh, Madam Chairman, and a 1.5 million original cost. Well, I just identified another 140,000. We need a meeting. Sure. We need a meeting because there's a ton of money here that's not being covered up front on this paper here. Wendy, have you considered meeting with the county commissioners and, uh, and presenting this to them? The suggestion has been made, but it's it's yours first. Um, it, it's, you know, since we were the applicant and we received the money, then that would be maybe the next steps, some of the next steps. And I guess I should, like I, I should have asked you, will, are you planning to meet with them? Are I you? will plan to do whatever y'all direct me to do. Um, uh, Wendy, at our, I, I attended the first read-through, and we had some discussion about you asking for a little extension. Were you able to get that? Yes, ma'am. And what kind of timeline did they give you on um, that? We were able to extend the actual award date to April 1, and we don't have to start drawing down money until we get ready. We don't even meet before April. No. We don't meet again before no, April. No, but that so. was, they originally, yeah. the original grant was when it was approved, which was February the 7th. We can push it out because until we start the project, we don't have to start the timeline, so to speak. So 45 days from the April 1st, they, we would have to have a get in or get out right. decision. Um, and I want, I'll, for the record, I'm excited about the possibilities of what this can do you know, for our students in Beaufort County. So I'm excited about that. I don't want anybody to think I'm against it. I think it's wonderful. At the same time, right. I have the same reservations that I had when you wrote the grant, which was uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we, I do not want to look at any other school in this county and tell them they have to do without or they have to give something up in order for, it, for, for us to sustain the academy. I and, and I still stand behind that because our schools in place are important to me. Snowden's important to me. We have to sustain those schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that said, my questions are all going to be, I know academically we have the people and the training and the know-how, and I trust you and Andrea to know what you have to do to put all the academics and, and the curriculum in place. 
what I know, I don't know, that I know you also don't know, is what our fixed costs will be going forward. What will this board be on the hook years from now to maintain this school and keep it sustainable? Is it going to be 150000 300000 50000 None of those answers we quite have, and I think, speaking for myself and maybe this side, we haven't heard from this side yet, those are the concerns I have are all financial. Can we really Ooh. afford? There's a reason this academy is not in Pitt County or Craven County or Dare County. It's because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. It's not a, cheap, not a cheap academy you can set up overnight and run. This is an expense to Beaufort County Schools, mm -hmm. and we, we have to take it seriously. Yeah. I'm excited about what it can do, but I, <coughs> I'm afraid, will that give us enough time to get those figures, do you believe? Yes. No. Yes, I do think we can get the figures. We believe that. Them, but we need to have a meeting before the... Um, can I... Go ahead. I also support it very fully, but I'm also, I have the same reservations about the finances down the road. <clears throat> but I see a list of the businesses on the back. Yes, sir. I know they've gave some verbal commitments. Is there a way that maybe we can contact them to see whether equipment-wise or financial-wise or what they may be able to be willing to pump in? Um, yeah, I saw academy. their names, but what is the commitment? Yeah. And is it a one-time thing? We'll give you $10,000 when it starts, but you'll never see another $10,000, that sort of if, thing. If we get the approval to move ahead and, and have some other conversations, then I believe um, a suggestion has been made that we do it by program area and have the businesses that are interested in particular program areas to come and sit down and say, this is specifically what I can do in this area. But the problem with that is for us to say, yes, we have to know what their commitment is. Well, I understand. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you w would like for some of those conversations to take place, um, I work for y'all. I will do whatever you ask me <laughs> to do. Terry? Yes. I know you um, I think it's going to be extremely tight, 45 days. I, I don't mean to go against you, but I mean... You're not going to get an answer that quickly from the county commissioners. You're not going to get buy-in that quickly from any of the businesses because I we would need buy-in from the commissioners, the businesses that want to contribute, and how much they're going to contribute every year. This is what we're doing. We should have a bullet list, you know, a punch list of these are the things that we've got to take care of. This is how much these these things are going to cost, Year after and year. how are we going to pay for them just to get it up and running. Then the ongoing costs, we can talk about that right. after the fact. But getting it up and running, we should we should already have that bullet list. We should have already had those conversations with the county commissioners, and we should have already had commitment from businesses. You're not going to get that in 45 days. Well, she's already. I had would some. I would struggle to see that happen. Can I put a number to it? Why my concern was sure because I'm a numbers guy. I know yeah, you are. I so know am I. You are. I mean, I um, want this thing to happen, guys. Don't and, get and me wrong. I'm not against it. I want to make that very clear. But before I still put my approval on it, I want to know I can write the check. Right. Um, the original grant, as I said, puts us about a quarter of a million dollars, two forty something, give or take. Let's just call it a quarter of a million dollars short of what we anticipated. Just on the night coming up, two more agenda items. Go ahead. Well, if I may. So Can I let him speak? We're putting in, or we propose to put in, this side would not require any use of the board. It will be standalone heat pumps like we have in our residence, like we have right. in other schools. The board still would be needed at the Ed Tech Center to maintain the um, gymnasium and the classrooms on the, the far end of part. the 200 right. And that's what I'm speaking. I'm, t I'm talking about, as Terry was ongoing and how much it's going to cost. But just coming up in two more agenda items down, there's $321,000 included on here total, including that boiler for the ed tech. So if you take that and another number on the grant, that's $570,000 we've identified right here outside the grant. I, I mean, I just got to find out where that money's coming from because I, I know, well, my finance manager, he's somewhere, there he is. I know the last time we spoke to him, we didn't have another 500000 in capital just honest, laying we around. We don't have that money right now. That's all I'm saying. We don't have so that money we, right now, We've got guys. to get the commissioners to see what they're going to <coughs> us with. But these are real numbers. These are phew, lots of money. 
Lots well, we're using EdTech now, and uh, if I ain't badly mistaken, some of the money that's on that capital list, we're going to have to spend to continue to use EdTech, right, Stan? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's talking. We're only um, using a few, not using that much of it, actually. Yeah. When you look uh, down what we've the been hallway. doing in the past is robbing Peter to pay Paul yeah. because the commissioners haven't been funding right. EdTech. We've had projects. to take it from other sources to do the repairs. And now the number's there. getting so big. What Carolyn, I agree with our chairperson here, I don't want to take from other schools that much money so no i agree yeah. i am um Can you say it again sir? Sir, me. I, I was saying that uh i mean we're <coughs> the money that we're that's in our capital budget right now for for snuff i mean for ed tech is stuff that we're going to have to spend to continue to use it correct as we're using it now really we're talking about yes yeah. sir but another thing too, if, if we do that renovation and that money is absorbed by renovating that part, we could definitely downsize the board or the board wouldn't be even nowhere as big as it currently is. And if we would step up and spend part of that money that we saved from the board shrinking just to keep the gym, we could put bar units on the other six classrooms there and we wouldn't need the board for the school for anything other than the gymnasium, which would take a small um, package unit would, would drop work way on that would probably the eight ten thousand dollar range for more just to keep the gym. And what's the longevity of those versus the well, versus the bigger unit? About fifteen to twenty years old that we have in service now. So I mean, you see where I'm going, yes, Stan, right? All right. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions or or comments? I think. I think it's a given right now that we we need to try to have a conversation with the county commissioners. Um, I, I I am aware that there was support from them that they think this is a great idea. Of course, I I can't imagine too many people that are not going to think having an academy for non-college bound students. That's always going to be a plus. Um, but I think what we need to try to get is a commitment. And, and I think I voiced this at the read-through meeting. What we have struggled with sometimes uh, is that they will support us and say, we'll give you $250,000. And oh, by the way, on your capital over here, you're going to be 250000 less than what you right. normally get. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So there's some things. And, uh, and obviously, we have a short period of time to do these. Um, I would entertain some ideas on how we can go forward if there's two or three board members that would like to uh yeah with uh mr cheeseman and let's let's have a, a a meeting with the county commissioners as soon as we could set something up to see if the support is there uh i i entertain any other ideas but i think miss Petaway deserves some sort of answer tonight so she knows what to do going forward i'm not asking for a vote to approve this i'm asking for how yeah action to be taken on how we're going to go forward with the county commissioners as soon as possible who has some time and willing to do that i mean i'll meet with the county commissioners i'd, I'd meet, love I'd, to meet yeah them. I'd, okay i meet with some and of them i could meet with them as well me. so okay. I mean, you, you live depending on I, I, when, I, I you know my, okay. <laughs> my availability <laughs> you got this here <laughs> you got that one's here evening <laughs> better yeah the, the, okay. there's no conflict okay so i have uh terry and miss booth and mr draper anybody else and, and myself, so that's four of us. And um, if for some reason I can't get help, any more, we have to And if I can't go, if, you know, Michael could go. Uh, if, if we could get some firm commitments, if that's available, possible. If you could do possible. that, um, if, if some of these commitments are could be put in writing, that would help us. I think it would help us to show them we have these commitments. But like I said, it's got to be more than a one time commitment. Mm -hmm. So if a, if a car dealership wants to help us in the automotive, it's going to be year after year after year they're going to help us, especially if they're going to then recruit these, hopefully recruit these young men and women to work. But um, So can we I mean, talk then? We can be creative on that <laughs> front as well. I mean, well, you know, I mean, if they want to donate a lift day one and then based on how much rececruitment they get I mean we got to think creatively yeah. like that's that true yeah, the I agree. If you're right. that's out, true because if we're turning out an X that's number of things true. that they're hiring they're going to give more money that's right. right right and if remember with everything they donate they there's pay there's yeah. repair and maintenance you got to be a, sales, gotta be a salesman to them that's right <laughs> you cannot <laughs> you cannot expect for them to want to contribute anything if you have four members four students when you start and when you get ready to ask for some more money there's only two students you can't ask them for nothing that's, that's right. right exactly exactly you got you got to be willing to put out the that's right. right that's right so. all right 
Thank you, Ms. Petaway. I appreciate and, y'all's consideration. Of yes, this. and we will certainly, I'll get back with you, Mr. Cheeseman, to get back with you when we can set that up <coughs> and we'll talk. Thank you so much. Thank I you. It. Thank you for all the work you put into this, and thank you, uh, thank you, Ms. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, we all want the best for our sure. county. That's a I given. See. And I don't envy the position that you all are in. I know you're trying to be fiscally responsible. And, but and we I also want to do right. what promotes and these students to a career, too. I understand. You've got to figure out a way to do it all. Thank you. Thank you all so much, Wendy. Thank you. All right, we're going to keep going. Uh, on 5.3, the Southern Regional Education Board, Mr. Cheese. Uh, members of the board, in your board package, you should have a copy of a preliminary MOU. And this is just for, con for thinking purposes only, no action tonight. This is a week in advance of a presentation that will come to you next week. But I wanted to give you some preliminary understanding. So the Southern Regional Education Board, known as uh, SREB, uh, works under the guidance of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, specifically looking to help rural school systems uh, raise the achievement of students. And they look specifically at the achievement gaps between our uh, black populations, Latino populations, and low-income students across the board. And we've had a uh, we've been approached by this board to specifically come work with in Beaufort County Schools to really run a study around school improvement. And so the SREB and, and my team specifically have talked about where we could actually have this assistance with greater professionals coming in to help us understand uh, measures of instruction, to help us understand with measures of leadership, but even more so to provide guidance over the next three years around engagement with our students, what our kids need, how we can raise their, their knowledge, how do we grow our professionals. And it's essentially um, a strong commitment as sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates. So at this moment, there's no cost to us um, as this is a foundation-sponsored opportunity coming out of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And so it's really an extension of professionals who would like to come to Beaufort County and work with us. In return, they would actually be able to utilize our data to understand better how to help, help other communities across the country. Uh, so this is a partnership that may come to fruition should you see a presentation next Tuesday. Again, it really looks at the achievement gaps between our black students, Latina students, and low-income students. And we're looking at four different schools. And uh, Ms. Lilly, correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking at Chuck Winnerty Middle School, P.S. Jones Middle School, Washington High School, I believe, and the Early College, correct? And so we're really trying to take a cross-section of the district um, and see what type of outcomes we can have moving forward. But I wanted just to provide this information to you for some reading. Over the next week, we can have conversation individually if you need to learn a little bit more. You can do your research, but the professionals from the SREB will be here next Tuesday in our work session to really give you a greater uh, depth of a presentation so you understand what this looks like, sounds like, feels like for our students. Any questions? Excellent. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. We're going to keep moving on. 5.4, 2019-20 capital budget. Uh, Executive Director, Mr. Stan Hudson. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Snowden. <laughs> Hi, Snowden. Help Lee. <laughs> Team, where are you going? Um, let me first apologize. Our spreadsheet <coughs> went haywire. Um, we got a blank space in it, and a couple of the numbers um, did not add up to be total. Um, the, on page five, um, the top number, which was 625, 625,000, it's really 745. We hadn't found our error in our spreadsheet, but we will get it corrected and get y'all a correct copy um, with all the numbers. But um, totaling for our budget for leaving the brick and mortar and leaving the metal buildings out for a maintenance operation and capital budget, we're looking at $8,651,476. Mr. Willie ran all these numbers via calculator, made sure we were right on our totals. Um, depending whether we went with brick and mortar building, if we decide, if y'all decide to replace the, the modulars, um, it would be 22961630 with a brick and um, with the steel buildings would be 17,016,536. 
So we will get this corrected tomorrow, and I'll get Miss Lisa to send it back out to y'all with the numbers totaled. Um, it is in priority list, Mr. Butch. I ask everything's been. I talked to all the principals. Um, we prioritize their list by schools, and then we move the items down to the um, last two pages that are maintenance related items. Um, so in each school, the the first one listed is according to the principal. The principal, and some of them happen to be the items that I had on there, so it would be mine and his <coughs> together, or or hers. Okay. Yeah. So, Anybody have any questions? Yeah, so when I look under schools and departments, because I got the printout you gave us two weeks ago, and it all matches up pretty good. Except under schools and departments, there's a lot of items that have been pulled off that's not on the sheet here. They were the, du that's they, the double the aspect. They're on the last two pages, yes, sir. There maintenance. was no item. There was yes, items sir. added. There was no yes, items that's removed. That's what I thought they were going to pull over to maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was there was there was nothing removed. There was a few added. There was a couple of redundancies in there on air condition and a roof that was stowed in the school that did come out. There was some couple of double numbers, but um, there was no project that was removed. And I made sure that each principal that I, the list was what we sat down and went through each one of them, made sure we had the items they had because I know there was a walkway missing at North Side and <coughs> one missing at T.S. Jones and right, that little sidewalk. Right, all those were put in. Okay, so that's awesome. a painting. Paintings, of, depending on whether we contract or whatever, there was just one number on just the Washington High School gym was $54,000. Um, to get obligation from the local painters, nobody wanted to spend the time to give me a number. It's a lot of, lot of time to be spent to not to get to work, and they just I couldn't find a painter that would give me time or give me a number. I could take that number and divide square foot, but that's still not a fair number because the Washington High School gym is so tall, right. and they got to protect the floor. So. That was the one number that I had when I called the guy. He said, I've looked at it before. I'll give you an updated number on it because I already got the square feet and everything. He'd give me that number. So, Stan, have you had any success at all in getting any bids in on the asphalt paving? You, know, that you were having a hard time getting commercial Yes, ma'am. We we've, we've got several companies now that have bid right Good, right yes, good. You were yep. I, I talked to somebody about that the other day, and they said, um, you know, you should be able to get somebody to bid on it if you yes, get them as a collective package. The problem I have is with the track. Getting right. Several bids. I've got. We've got one on the south side track for this current year's budget. Why is that? Or why do you what, think it when is? When we over? first looked at redoing re, redoing the track, we were going to have it redone as is. Fix the patches. They recolor it, restripe it. And they, they don't do that anymore. They won't warrant it if they do that. Uh, me and Mr. Cheeseman called him and asked him, would they do it? And they said, no, under no terms, that they want to take all the rubber up, back to the asphalt, repair, and redo. It was the only way they would give us any warranty. And that was only a two-year warranty. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. We're going to keep going. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now we have a budget amendment from uh, 6.1 from Willie Mack Carowin. You've got a link attached. Um, on your budget amendment tonight for the state, it has an increase of $144,608. Um, fund two, there's not really an overall increase. There's a shifting of $1,100 between the various PRCs with that one. Um, federal, we had an increase of $145,626.40. Um, in our capital outlay, we received a donation. Uh, we've received some interest earned as well as the insurance settlement for the plant ops is in there. So it's an increase of $309,042. Child nutrition has a $20. I had a spreadsheet glitch last month and I missed 20 bucks in reconciling it. Um, your fund six has an increase of $181,606.47. The after school program in Fund 7 has an increase in its initial budget of $185,268.16. And then our Fund 8 has an increase of $119,338.12. Under your PRC 862, that is a an, an digital instructional meeting that's held regionally. Uh, that we hosted at the EdTech Center, so that booked the revenue in for instructional <coughs> technology. Any questions? Asking for approval tonight. Yes, sir. 
Anybody have any questions? I'll make the motion. So, second. All right, we've got a motion to approve the budget <coughs> amendments as presented by Mr. Carowin and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. All right, now we're on. We've got a nice long list here. We'll let Mr. Cheeseman go over field trip 6.2. If you'll click on that. Sure, members of the board, if, uh, for your consideration, Washington High School is seeking a field trip for June 17th through the 22nd, specifically for their JROTC leadership training STEM camp uh, in Bowling Green, Virginia. Also, Northeast Elementary School for April 26th through the 27th, <coughs> seeking, seeking a trip to uh, North Carolina State University in Raleigh for the Science Olympiad State Tournament, which we've qualified for, we're very excited about. Also, Northside High School for the same dates for the Science Olympiad State Tournament, and then Northside High School in May 3rd through the 4th <coughs> to Cedar Rock Park for the Envirothon competition. Any questions uh, for what has been presented? Move no approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you, you and good luck to all of those involved. All right, now we are going to entertain a closed session. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to general statute 143318111A1 and 8 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under general statute 115C321. <coughs> we have a second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. We are in closed session. Thank you. All right, we had a motion. We're out of closed session. Um, could I have a motion that we, um, to approve our agendas as? So moved. Second. Sorry. Sorry, it's getting hot in here. It went down the range. I know. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Now let's look at the calendar. Um, Mr. Cheeseman, we're on here for uh, actually next Tuesday right. at 5 30. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have another one on Tuesday, April 16th at 5 30. Tuesday. Did you say Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. April 2nd. You sound like the uh, lottery. Tuesday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday. That's the way so I Every first like Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to come right you back know, in a week and then come back yeah. in two weeks. It's important. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's important. important. He's gonna, we're going to have the, the budget. budget. Okay. This, the one on the 16th, can we do something different on than the 16th? Sure. No. It's your calendar. Sure. I mean, because it's the middle of the month for one thing. It wouldn't even hurt if we went another week or unless That's you fine. need to, to well, meet. Well, let me outline. The reason that the meeting is tonight is last week um, several of us were out of state and right. I appreciate you moving to tonight. But next Tuesday, uh, you'll likely this Friday, you're going to receive the draft budget that Willie Mack and I have been putting together to get it out to you for the weekend so you can take a look at it. And then during the work session, Willie Mack and I will start walking through what that budget looks like. Now, in the past, you've received maybe one or two pages of a cover of you know what each category looks like but we've really been talking about what zero based budgeting looks like so this will be far more detailed than probably what Willie Mack is even used to uh, but we're asking him to give you more information than less and allow you to decide what's more important than not. and that's really why we want to put it in front of you on April 2nd because by the end of the month, no matter whether it's the 16th or the 23rd or whatever it is, and you have to be mindful of spring break in there, but we want you to be able to you know, manipulate it, work with it, tell us what to take out, tell us what to put in. And that, way, that way, by the end of April, if you're confident with the way we've massaged it all, then you can improve it. And then we can go to the county commissioners for our main meeting. So that's really where we are. So that's why April 2nd is important to us, to keep that meeting if okay. you can make it just so we can put that budget part in front of you so you have ample amount of time and that's what I always preach to you but ample amount of time so you can <coughs> read through it so it's um, important and as far as the 16th can you, uh, we can we can move that around but here's the thing we we have a very hard decision that we're gonna have to make about the golden leaf grant and I don't want that to be pushed so far as 
to the point that we have our backs against the wall and we have three days in which to allow Wendy to get that information in. How about that Monday? 15th. <coughs> Monday the 15th? Yeah, I mean, if we don't, they won't push it out any. Meet Monday and Tuesday? No, no instead just, of Tuesday. Just meet one day. Just meet Monday instead of Tuesday. Oh. Do you think that would um, give us the few of you, uh, Miss Booth and Terry and Terry, can you, uh, will that give us time to get together with Commissioner? Well, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, we'll set it up. They meet, um, are they going to meet on the first? They first meet. Monday. I remember first the Monday. 15th is the last day of tax day, mm -hmm. the April 15th, if anybody cares. <laughs> I don't care. I should care. I'm pay I mean, I'll have my stuff done that weekend, so I'm good. <laughs> well, let's let's move the 15th, the 16th meeting to Monday the 15th for right now. Um, I'm not going to promise you that we won't have to add a third meeting if we need to refine the budget. Sure, that's important. Okay, because we want to make sure we're prepared uh, by May 1st. Ideally. <coughs> right. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Tuesday, April 2nd at 5.30, Monday, April 15th at 5.30, and and then uh, I'll have a, I'll be contacting a few of you when we can get together. Are there any other questions about the calendar? Everybody good on that? Mm -hmm. All right, board member updates. Ms. Booth, do you have anything tonight that you need to share with us? I'm just going to sure start did. down there. Go right ahead. The first thing that I have to share is I don't think I'm going to make that second meeting, <laughs> that April the 2nd meeting. I will be coming back from conference. Uh, I don't know exactly when I'm going to get back in, but I will let you know that I'll think about you guys while I'm in Philadelphia, and I will, I promise you I will represent you well because I feel that we do have the best board that's in this eastern part of North Carolina, and I want them to know it as well as I know it. So I will represent you well, and thank you so much for allowing me to attend. I hope I will get back. I don't know. But if I don't, just carry on and do a good job. Eat a cheesesteak for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Good. That's it. All right, Mr. Williams. No thanks. Nothing. Miss Peed. Mr. Bill Brown. No, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Oliver. Mr. Draper. All right, board member updates. We're short as we can. Thank you. Once again, I want to congratulate all of our. Uh, recipients tonight for being honored and I encourage all of the students and athletes and all the, rep the young men and women that represent your school to keep doing what you're doing. We're very proud of you uh, in all capacities. Superintendent updates. Uh, all right, so as just discussed, April 2nd will be your uh, first budget review session. April 3rd, our district is having a calendar meeting where we're asking uh, teachers and constituents to come back and work with us that Wednesday afternoon to develop the school calendar, which we'll bring to you on that April 15th meeting for uh, first review. On April 5th, all principals are coming here individually to work with Mr. Doan and I, and I specifically looking at their allocations for each school setting for next year, meaning total number of students, total number of positions. So. That first full week of April is pretty busy. Um, also, tomorrow night, uh, Ms. Walker, myself, possibly Mr. Bill Bro, will be attending the Northeast RESA legislative update. So we'll be meeting with our senators and representatives of the state Good to night. talk about those key issues that we need support with and help with in Beaufort County. And then I believe all of you, including myself, received an unsolicited email regarding um, school safety and security and so specifically looking at that email it talked about security services versus SRO services so I will entertain that meeting to to see what specifically is, is being offered in terms of uh, security for all of our campuses all right so that's a general overview right now and stepping out is next Friday next Friday which is what is what is the date of that April 5th yes. Yes. my birthday okay. well stepping out is next Friday so anybody that wants tickets you need to contact Lisa uh, so that they'll know all right if there's nothing else I'll make a motion to adjourn second all right we have a motion to adjourn in a second all those in favor say aye aye all right everybody have a great evening